哎。Everybody, welcome to Dojo's Vintage Gaming, whatever you want to call it. Things that I remember when I was a kid. Now, I'm old. You guys know I'm old. Well, I'm not that old. Well, I'm okay. I'm older than you. I am going through the Super Nintendo today. All right, so you guys probably don't even know what this is. Now, if you do, thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a game system that changed my life. Now, my first big video game system was the Nintendo system, the very first one, the uh, 1985 release one. But the one that really changed my gaming world is the Super Nintendo. Yes, this is the original one that I got when I was, I think, 11 years old. This thing has been through wars together. The, 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 look, everyone knows it. The color changes, the plastic changes. Look at that thing. Uh, this thing's broken. That broke a long time ago. That's what you hear. There's parts in there. I don't know. They were, but you know what? This thing still works. This thing works perfectly every time. Connections are pretty simple. Nothing really to write home about. An AV, some expansion port that never got used. Uh, the bottle of bomb had one too. An uh, expansion port uh, didn't never get used for anything. Maybe some Japanese thing. Who knows? <laughs> That's the system. Let's go through some of the games I've got. Let's count off here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen cartridges I still have from the original system. I'm gonna start with the piece of resistance. The one that my best friend Brennan would know. Whoa. Mario Kart, this game changed people's lives. I mean, of course it did because uh, they still make them. This is the original one, guys. This is the one that was, uh, they didn't have 3D graphics back then, but they pretended to. They had, I, don't know how they did it. I don't know how they did it. I don't care. I spent days on this game. I was a master for many years. Man, that music. Whew. This one you guys may not know, Populous. Okay, so this is actually a PC game by Acclaim that, um, that was ported for the Super Nintendo, but I spent days on this thing, days. It was a weird kind of like a, I don't know how you explain it, it was like a board game sort of thing. We had this huge map where you raise and lower land, you were gone. You had little tribal people, you had to build buildings, and if you flatten the land out long enough, they'd become little castles, and they'd grow, and they'd pop out little more people, and they'd grow, and then you had to go after other people, and do volcanoes and tornadoes. It was an incredibly good game. Next one, oh, Super Smash TV, baby! No, this one's special because uh, you guys don't know the game called Running Man. This is an old game, a movie back in the 80s by uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I get the to the chopper in the movie. This game was basically a, a, a ripoff of that concept where you, uh, where people in the future, I think it was 2025, ooh, it's like, like five years from now, is supposed to go into some kind of game show where you, where they, they fight their way through level after level and they make money doing it. It's a really good game. It's a, basically an arcade shooter. Two players can go at it. I just played it because it was so much fun. Next one. Oh baby, I may I should stream this game. Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2. <laughs> this was when fighting games meant something. You you know you knew how to do things. Ryuken, Ryuken. I don't know. I, what you gonna say? If you don't know what this game is, check it out. It's uh it's just the original two pl uh, two player uh, 2D fighting game galore. It was amazing on Super Nintendo. They ported it beautifully from the arcade. You didn't feel like you're you're cheapening the experience. Probably one of my top five 10 games ever. Here's a classic. Star Fox. Again, they just put up a new one lately, but apparently it's garbage. This one's a classic. This is, I think, the very first 3D game ever to produce on a console. Really cheap graphics for the most part, but man, made an impression. Square Enix's Secret of Mana. Now, it's not Final Fantasy, but I think it's an extension of that world. That whole, uh, the whole RPG, turn-based sort of battling, uh, um, uh, leveling character, fantasy sort of game. Uh, very beautiful game, highly recommended. Probably one of my top 20 games of all time. I haven't played it in 20 years, so I wouldn't know anymore, right? And here comes my favorite game of all time. Now, we've said this before, I say it's Call of Duty now, right? But really what it is, my favorite game of all time still has to be the Zelda, Link to the Past. This game is a serious contender for the best game on Earth. I played it probably 17 times through. I don't even know how many times. The, the, the missions are so well thought through, they're timed great. Uh, there's actually a, yeah, like a, a middle of the game you think you're about to finish the game and it swipes you to a whole different world where it's basically the same world but opposite side and it's like darker and it's evil and man, that was a mind changer. This was like a, a, a next step in generation of gaming. You can't, you can't, you can't mention a, a Nintendo system with the with the flagship Super Mario World. Now this was the, of course the extension of Super Mario Brothers uh, totally took it to another level. I think the leap from Super Mario Brothers to Super Mario Brothers World was such a huge leap, it was insane. The, the, it was the same vibe and feel, and but more and more and more and more. You've got Yoshi, guys. Yoshi was introduced. Can, can you see right there? It's focus. Yoshi. Oh, beautiful game. Not the best game, but the best subject matter. Empire Strikes Back. It was my favorite movie ever, so I had to get it on Super Nintendo. A very hard game. These, these games were did not... Um, 
They didn't uh, hold your hand. Okay, you, you, you died and you had to start from the beginning of the map. And that map was big and the map was hard. You did it again, you did it again. A lot of platforming, a lot of death, a lot of difficult bad guys, but top quality gaming, honestly. Whoa. All right, if you had the extension for the Super Nintendo, I don't have it here, but I, I have it somewhere. Four people could play on the Super Nintendo. There's only like, like five games that even allow you to do that. And three of them were sucky, one of them didn't work, and this one. Bomberman. Actually, it's Super Bomberman. It's super, everything's super. It's super Nintendo. <laughs> so it's Super Bomberman, guys. Yeah. Oh my god, so much fun. A puzzle map, sort of, where you have a grid, and there's a bunch of blocks that can be blown up through bombs, and you each start in a corner, and you're all about to kill each other, right? You play a plant a bomb, blows up the space, keep moving toward, 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 and you get a power ups like longer bomb lengths, bigger bomb lengths, roll, you can kick one, you can hop one over a ledge. It's just multiplayer action, four player quad screen like no one has ever done before. I'm telling you, the reason why Super Nintendo is probably the best console ever is because they seem to innovate in everything from fighting games to platformers to multiplayer. On a console in the early 90s that didn't have any processing power, I think it was 16 bit, right? Okay. Now, this is an interesting one. This is more of a late, uh, li late life Super Nintendo game Super Mario All Star. Okay, so if you wanted to play your old Super Nintendo, I mean, your Nintendo games, your old Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3, you're kind of out of luck because you had to go put on your old console. So they have put it this thing. It's every Mario game up to that point. I think, you know, I don't think Super Mario World's on there, but they, okay, so it's, it's two, three, and then there's the Japanese Mario Brothers 2. So uh, some people don't know that like the Mario Brothers 2 was like, a little weird one. It was ported, it was never actually late released in Japan. It was like some weird American version, some dreamscape to uh, Mario. Uh, fun, but really wasn't in the flavor of Mario. But there's a Mario Brothers 2 that exists that only came out in Japan, and it's basically just the first one but you know, uh, with more more levels. And that one's included on this disc. But of course they have the new graphics, updated graphics, updated sound for the Super Nintendo. Phenomenal disc, highly recommended. This game, I don't even know where I got it. it wasn't me that bought it. NCAA basketball. <laughs> That's all I gotta say about that. Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Now this game was, um, Another one's examples of it wasn't exactly Final Fantasy. It was like it was like an extension of the world, the concept of it, and it's just one of my top games of all time. I, I, I like Final Fantasy, but I think I like these these outer games a little bit better. The ones that didn't fit in the uh, normal paradigm. They kind of had kind of experiment a little bit more. Oh, okay. So this one, okay, this one I probably probably didn't own. A friend probably came over, left it here, didn't remember it. Some guy named Curry. Some cur uh, curry. So if there's a Curry in the house and you know who I am and, and you you want to you want to get your uh, uh, <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr.'s baseball back. Go ahead, because I'm. You can have it. Mario Paint. I'm <laughs> Mario Paint. They came with a little mouse and a mouse pad. I have that as well. I, I should have brought it out here for the video. What am I thinking? And you could you could paint. You could make little images. Um, you couldn't do anything with it because on your Super Nintendo, it wasn't like a computer where you could upload it or do something with it. It was actually kind of probably my first iteration of learning how to work with like images. So maybe it was like the the spark that made me a designer. I don't know. Okay, this isn't a game. This is a sim. This is probably one of the worst sims. Don't even know why I have it. Weird. Sim Earth. Really boring game. Literally, you are in charge of making a planet. Bad game, but uh, I have it. F zero, people. Oh, snap a ding dong. Limited graphics, but they seem to make it feel like you're flying because uh, they did an innovative idea of making everything lights. The cityscapes are left and right. And by making the lights look like they're going really fast by you, you felt like you were going really, really fast. Really fun game. It was hard when you got to the higher levels, but it was the, the learning curve was just perfect. You never felt like you were fighting the game. And finally, a game that is again a port of a PC, but a huge influential game, influential game for me. Sim City. Sim City on Super Nintendo. It worked, and there was a great glitch in the game. If you made roads, railroads. You never had to worry about traffic and pollution. This is how you'd play the game, right? You had a huge map, right? You would line two blocks all the way around the map with industry. And then you do a layer inside, all commercial. And you go one more layer in, and then you do cubes of resident. And you just do that, and then you commercial, then resident commercial, all the way into the center of the map. And you could fill up the entire thing, never have pollution issues, never have traffic issues. I mean, finding that in, out on my own was great. I did not read that up on anywhere. I just kind of experimented with every little map iteration. And man, did it work. It was wonderful, you felt so good. And then there was the, man, mon the money glitch. Anybody remember the money glitch? I remember the money glitch. It was something to do with like, at the end of the tax season on December, on December 31st, if you pause the game and you lowered your tax rate to zero or something like that, and then you unpause the game, when it came January 1st, something glitched where boop, it gave you infinite money, or all the nines. That was like $9 billion. Nine billion, 999,000, whatever, nine, nine, whatever. I don't know, money or numbers, I'm coming. 
fucking idiot. Uh, Sim City was a big deal. Uh, my best friend Brendan came over many times, just sat there and played for hours with me. Um, really good game. So guys, that's all, the, that's all the games, but I will leave you here with this. The controller! Oh my gosh, the controller! Probably the most epic controller ever. There you go. Look at that Oh, now I don't know if you can see, it picks up on the screen, but you can see, I don't know if it'll show up on this thing. There is a big crack right through here, okay? There's a big crack. That crack symbolizes the first dojo rage I've ever had in a game system. And I was mad. I, was like, I, I literally just crushed it like eight year old hands. I don't know, sorry, 12 year old hands. Little, little, little guy hands. Like, ah, ah. And I heard a crack sound. I looked down. Okay, the game works. It, it didn't, it, that, that's the thing about old Nintendo games and old systems and old uh, nostalgic vintage pieces. For some reason, they just always work. Now, maybe because they're so simple. Maybe they're so low end when it comes to like bit rate and all that. So there wasn't that much going on, but my gosh, did they work well. And they work through abuse. And it's now what, 20 years later, 25 years later, and it's still working. That's it guys, that's my Super Nintendo. I love it, it's my machine. That, uh, that's the machine that I grew up on. It's a beautiful machine. I'll try to do my, my Nintendo system. And I got the Dreamcast. I've got PlayStation 2. I got some other things too. So guys, uh, I'll see you in the streams every night at 9.30 p.m. Central uh, for the Game Dojo channel. Oorah!